I was tempted to title this section, All Roads Lead to the Major Scale. Well, most roads, perhaps. If we can thoroughly wrap our brains around the major scale, we can much more easily explain the concepts of intervals, chords, modes, and other scales. We will use the piano keyboard to illustrate scales, melody, harmony, uh, etc., because it's a good graphic way to show how notes, pitches, that is, relate to music notation as it appears on the staff. Notes moving lower in pitch move to the left on the keyboard. Conversely, notes moving higher in pitch move to the right on the keyboard. Instead of left and right, we will use the terms up and down, as that is how our ears perceive pitch movement. There are many octaves of C to C running from low to high on the keyboard, but for now we will restrict ourselves to the one octave from middle C to the next C an octave higher. Why C major? Well, it is the easiest major scale to visualize. The major scale matches the white keys in any octave from C to C on the piano keyboard. Remember, a half step is the distance to the very next key, up or down, black or white. From C up to C sharp is a half step. From G down to G flat is also a half step. Notice, however, there is no black key between E and F, nor is there any black key between B and C. The distance from B to C, as with E to F, is also a half step. Put another way, C sharp is a half step above C. You could also say that D flat is a half step above C. C is a half step below C sharp. You could also say that C is a half step below D flat. D flat is a half step below D. You could also say that C sharp is a half step below D. E is a half step below F. F is a half step above E. B is a half step below C. C is a half step above B. Keep in mind that the black keys can have two names, sharp from the key to its left or lower, or flat from the key to its right, higher. As you might guess, two half steps equal a whole step. For example, moving up the keyboard, C to D is a whole step. C sharp to D sharp is a whole step, but let's stick to the white keys for now. D to E is a whole step. E to F is a half step, no black key between. F to G is a whole step. G to A is a whole step. A to B is a whole step. B to C is a half step. Again, there's no black key between them. When we talk about the distance between any two notes, we are referring to intervals. An interval may often have more than one name depending how it appears on the staff, or if we are identifying it only by hearing it in the absence of notation. We'll get to all the exceptions further on down the road. So far, we have only discussed the half-step, whole-step, and the octave. 
We should also mention the smallest interval possible that occurs when two instruments or a singer produce or sing the same note. This is called a unison. The half step is also known as a minor second. The whole step is also known as a major second. We'll be using these terms interchangeably. Half step and minor second terms, as I said, can be used interchangeably. The whole step and major second term can be used interchangeably. When notated on the treble clef staff, the C major scale can begin at middle C, one line below the staff, ending at the third space an octave higher, also C. Remember, the interval between E and F is a half step or a minor second. The interval between B and C is a half step minor second. The interval between all other adjacent white keys are whole steps from one to the next major second. When referring to notes on the scale we need to identify their position in the scale. We call this the scale degree. The letter name of the first note in the scale is also its name. In this example, the C major scale, the first note in the scale is assigned the scale degree of 1, and that is C. The notes that follow continue in numeric order until we reach the starting note an octave higher, which we designate either as 8, although you can also refer to it as 1 if we were to continue the scale upward. In a major scale, no matter what note you start from, C in this case, the interval between E and F is always a half step, or a minor second. The interval between scale degree 3 and 4 in a major scale is always a half step minor second. The interval between B and C is always a half step minor second. The interval between scale degree 7 and 8 in a major scale is always a half step minor second. This bear is repeating. The interval between scale degree 3 and 4 is a half step minor second. The interval between scale degree 7 and 8 is a half step minor second. Now it just so happens that in a C major scale 3 and 4 occur on E and F, a half step between them. Also, between 7 and 8, they occur in the C major scale on B and C, a half step. Whether you are a singer or not, ear training involves learning to sing notes, scales, and intervals. Instead of singing a numeric scale degree 1 through 8, we use a system of movable syllables known as solfege. Corresponding to scale degrees 1 through 8, we sing the syllables Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. This corresponds with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is known as movable do solfege, and it can be used from any starting note in any key on any scale. Now, you should sing the upcoming exercises using both numeric scale degrees and their related solfege syllables, 
so that when you sing Do, you know it's also scale degree one. Do. When you sing Fa, you also know that it's scale degree four. Fa. Do, one. Do, re, mi, fa. One, two, three, four. When we start modifying the scale to use notes outside the scale, adding sharps and flats, singing by the numbers tends to get to be a mouthful. For example, singing Do, me, mi, sol, la, te, fi, sol, do is more efficient than singing one flat three three five six flat seven sharp four five one for those of you old enough to remember the julie andrews film the sound of music you might recall the song uh, lyrics illustrated here however for copyright reasons i'm not going to sing it for you i'm sure you can find it on youtube uh, you should additionally practice singing up and down the major scale using both the solfege system and numbers up and down one two three four five six seven eight eight seven six five four three two one do re mi fa sol la ti do do ti la sol fa mi re do because our notation is starting on middle C on the keyboard, you might find it too high or too low for your particular voice. Uh, in my case, I'm singing it down the octave. If I were to try singing it starting from middle C, my attempt would be Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do which is a little bit of a stretch for my low baritone voice. So instead of singing middle C, Do, I'm singing it an octave lower. Do. And with movable Do, you can use any starting note, high or low, as long as the intervals are correct. That is, you want a half step between Mi and Fa, scale degree 3 and 4, mi, fa, and a half step between T and do, scale degree 7 and 8. T, do. As long as you're practicing without other musicians, you could use any note that is comfortable for you to start with. I could pick a note out of thin air, do, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. When we move to other scales, such as G major or B flat or any other major scale, with movable do solfege, the name of that scale, its starting note, is always do. So if it's a G major scale, the starting note is G, and G is do. There will always, in a major scale, there will always be a half step between Mi and Fa, scale degree 3 and 4. There will always be a half step between T and Do, scale degree 7 and 8. The interval between E and F on the piano keyboard and in notation is always a half step, minor second. When building other scales, we will then have to adjust for this with sharps or flats. Same goes for the interval between B and C. No matter what scale, what key you're in, the interval between B and C is always a half step, a minor second. When building other scales, we will have to adjust for this with sharps and flats. We'll go into this in detail for later, but for now, here's an example. If we were to build a G major scale, G is scale degree 1 or Do, 
A, a whole step higher, is re, or scale degree two. Mi, or three, is B, a whole step above A. Between three and four, we need a half step. Well, it just works out that B to C is a naturally occurring half step, so we're good there. From C to D, which is four to five, or fa to sol, we need a whole step, and that's in fact what we've got. D to E, five to six, is a whole step. Now, going from six to seven, we see we're using the notes E to F, a naturally occurring half step. Therefore, we have to raise F by a half step to F sharp to make the distance from E to F a whole step. As a result, the distance from F sharp to G is a half step, and that's exactly what we need between 7 and 8, or T and Do. We'll cover this in greater detail later.